The co-foundresses were chosen from among the elite of the time and from among the few women who could read and write at that period of history. These young women, chosen by God through Father Aidan Brezzi and who were to begin the history of the congregation, found themselves in the same situation as Abraham called to begin the history of Israel. Leave your country and your people and go to a land which I will show you. With the same profound faith as Abraham, they set out into the unknown, willing to offer themselves with their youth, their talents and their goodwill to help the founder realize the plan of God for the local church of Vez and in the long run for the universal church. Little did they dream at that time that on their yes depended the birth of a new congregation, that their yes was only the beginning of countless yeses that were to follow. According to the traditions handed down in the congregation, it was on September 27, 1684 that Father Adrian Brezzi assembled the five young ladies in his presbytery. They were Marie Catherine Wauquin, Elizabeth Lerpe, Marie Anne Lopez, Margaret Delru, and Marie Barb Delru. They made their religious vows on November 25th, 1685 and became the living foundation stones of the congregation. On October 5th, 1685, they received the episcopal permission to wear the religious habit. Marie Catherine Wauquin, earlier appointed superior, first received the habit from the hands of Father Adrian Brezzi. She then gave it to her sisters. November 25, 1685 marks the official and canonical existence of the congregation of the Sisters of St. Charles Borromeo. Sister Marie Catherine Wauquin was a foundress and the first superior of the congregation. She had spent 61 years on this earth, of which 31 years had been spent in the congregation in the service of the poor. The annals of the time writes about her. How can we relate her immense charity, her spirit of mortification, her love of silence, her perfect poverty, her unalterable patience, especially during the 10 or 12 last years of her life when she was worn out with infirmity? The religious of St. Charles have always kept their eyes fixed on their first mother. Her examples have been their rule, her virtues their noble ideal. From generation to generation, the spiritual children of this energetic woman have risen to praise and bless her memory. On May 22nd, 1697, Sister Elizabeth Lerpe was chosen by vote 
to succeed Mother Catherine Wachwan. Until 1732, Sister Elizabeth Lerpe governed alternately with Sister Marie Magdalene Nulles, except from 1700 to 1704, when Sister Anne Marie Lopez was superior. These two souls so resembled each other that when the memoir says of one, it repeats almost textually of the other. The same spirit of recollection, the same untiring vigilance, the same unlimited charity. It was during the third term of superiorship of Sister Elizabeth Lepe, on June 17, 1718, that the construction of an oratory was begun with the permission of the bishop. And this, in spite of the difficulties and obstacles which were placed in their path by those who ought to have helped them. Sister Elizabeth laid the foundation stone. The annal says, God knows what we had to suffer. I say no more about it. During her 19 years of superiorship, Sister Elizabeth was always a mother full of vigilance and solicitude for her daughters. The poor blessed her as their providence. Her spirit of recollection helped her to face with courage and resignation the work and the difficulties with which she was assailed. On April 26, 1732, she breathed her last under the protection of the Blessed Virgin and of St. Joseph, for whom she had always a great devotion. Sister Anne Marie Lopez was the first of the co-foundresses to take her flight to heaven to pray for her congregation and to work at its development. The annal says, during her superiorship, 1700 to 1704, she distinguished herself by a great fervor joined to a rare prudence. At the beginning of the 18th century, most probably during the superiorship of Sister Anne Marie Lopez, the pupils from the most distant villages who wished to attend the school at Vez asked the sisters to lodge them. The number of these children kept increasing. This was the embryo of the boarding school which eventually was to become very flourishing. She died on November 4, 1708, the feast of the patron St. Charles Borromeo. After the historical account of the foundation and the religious vestation and profession of the five co-foundresses, the annals makes no mention of the two sisters from the parish of Vez, Sister Margarita del Rue and Sister Marie Barb del Rue. Their obituary notice could not be found either in the register of the convent or in those of the parish, so it is evident that they were not buried at Vez. Let us pray. With gratitude for Sister Catherine Wokwan, woman of faith and woman unafraid to risk, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and one another for an increase of faith and courage. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, hear our prayer. With gratitude for Sister Elizabeth Lerpe, her spirit of recollection and unlimited charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and one another for the daring spirit to face difficulties and challenges. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, hear our prayer. With gratitude for our relationship with one another and with all who have enriched our lives, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for openness to God's will for us and the grace to say, Thy will be done. We pray for ourselves and for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, hear our prayer.
Foundresses have been persons of prayer. Everything in their life points out to the fact that all their actions were permeated with a spirit of prayer. They were full of fervor and confidence in divine providence. It was in the power of prayer that Adrian Brezzi and the co foundresses found the strength and courage to take great risk. After the example of the founder, the sisters believed in the words of Jesus. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. John chapter 15 verse 5. 